that's it's, it's interesting that you say that because I've seen a lot of people um, like there's a social media post. Uh, one of my friends on Facebook, Garrett, he had posted. I think Dak Prescott, the the quarterback from the mm-hmm. Cowboys, he got uh he got like I think might be the largest contract of a quarterback ever. Cowboys like, can still afford to be putting out money. Yeah, Jerry Jones got deep pockets, and I'm I'm gonna be quick with this. But he was like, yeah, uh, Garrett was just basically applauding him, like you know, go go get your money black man and and then um one of our other friends commented was like well why does that have to be about race and i can understand why some people wouldn't understand why we have to highlight oh the first black Mm -hmm. to do this or the first black to do this although for us it would seem self-explanatory because in 2021 we're still having firsts for for black people but when you there there's something about just the anxiety you have of being in a space where everybody else Mm -hmm. looks the same and then you're different and there's and and it's not so much about skin color but within our within our race you know there's culture there's 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 tendencies there's there's jokes there's just a whole bunch of stuff where a lot of what you would use to do icebreakers to relate to other people other people won't get because they're not a part of that culture Mm -hmm. so it's really important representation matters having people having diversity in certain spaces matters because that allows people to feel comfortable, especially when you're talking about a work environment, and then that they can actually open up and be allow the creative juices to flow and be successful. But if you feel like, you know, nobody else is going to understand you or you have to operate a certain way in a certain space for eight hours a day for, you know, however many hundreds of days you work a year, it can get draining. It, it can get exhausting. tiring and get exhausting and you just like burn out. So you know, anyone who has to, like, in your industry, you've had to deal with that, like, as long as you've been working. Mm-hmm. Um, but after a while, it just get, gets exhausting. I've had to deal with that myself working in corporate America. Um, so representation definitely matters. Um, so for anybody who doesn't understand it, like, just trust people who say that it matters. <laughs> it does. And not, like, say, why does it have to be about race or why does it have to matter? Because it, it seems condescending and is actually really insulting because it's not something that you could ever understand. So rather than say, oh, you shouldn't say that because it honestly, ultimately, I think it just makes people uncomfortable say, oh, well, help me understand like what it's like for you. Like try to understand rather than just saying, oh, well, you should, you should be like me and not say it because that way nobody has to deal Mm -hmm. with the reality and and be uncomfortable. I want to emphasize because I think a big thing with representation just because you have diverse spaces doesn't mean people have to be canceled out. So I think a lot of, and I, I'm not white. I I can't necessarily speak for white people. I'm not trying to do that for y'all, but I think a lot of white people have an insecurity that if places and areas become more diverse, they lose their voice. They lose their power. They, they aren't at the table. Um, and that's not the case. Uh, white perspectives are needed too. Not as much, but they're needed. Um, the, <laughs> I'm just kidding. The thing is, because the way the, because of the way our society has been designed, a lot of us already understand white perspectives um, because that's what we've grown up having. That's what we've grown up knowing. You know, I always had white Barbie dolls. I always had, you know, all the American doll. American Girl doll books I had, most of them were white girls. Anytime I played games, for the most part, I always had to pick a white avatar. Um, The TV shows, Friends, Frasier, Seinfeld, a lot of the the shows and culture I grew up is white-based. So I I feel like I have a decent understanding of, you know, what goes into white culture. Um, But... That doesn't mean because you have, like for me, I get annoyed when there's a new show and it still has a white female lead and the black best friend. And I always think, why didn't someone think, let's swap this? Like the the black girl is capable of being awkward. The black girl is capable of, you know, wanting to- Shout out to Issa Rae. Shout out to Issa Rae. Uh, And we can talk about her later. And sign that deal with with Warner Warner Brothers. Yeah, what, a five-year deal? Um, It's epic. And, you know, she's really trailblazing. And if you haven't watched Insecure, regardless of your race, I highly encourage you to watch it. Not with children around. Um, But it's it's a 30-minute show on HBO. Not a kid's show. But, I mean, it just kind of shows you that black women and black people can have the exact same struggles. But we're not 
we're not given those spaces on the mainstream. You know, a lot of shows that do have, you know, black stars are usually dramas. Like you think of Olivia Pope um, and uh, Kerry Washington playing her, uh, Viola Davis. And there are these extreme dramas, but there aren't a lot of, you know, the sidekick shows where it's the black girl that's the star and the white girl who's the sidekick. And I think a lot of that that would make a huge difference. Um, Because like I said in the last show, a lot of other races look at entertainment to determine how cultures are, how a people are. So I do think representation in that capacity is so, so, so important. And the few shows that are doing it, like This Is Us, like they, with I'll Never Get Over the Coconut Oil and, you know, mm-hmm. Beth wrapping her hair at night and just her different hairstyles, like I, like that that is peak, the epitome of where, actually that's just the ground level of where we need to be. Um, so I, I, I feel like a lot of, with all the race talks that we've been having in the past year um, across the world, across the country, I feel like people need to be reassured that we're not trying to cancel an entire color of people. Like you are part of conversations, but if it's a table of 10, y'all shouldn't have eight seats. Well, I think it's my opinion. I think it's also just demographics, right? Like just the demographics of the country are, are changing and it's no secret that America loves black culture, right? Like, you look at dances, you look at hairstyles, you look at fashion, you look at... Oh, don't get me started. Inter- you saw what Jimmy Fallon did? People are mad at him. You look at... No, I didn't see it. Uh, you you look, at, it. look at entertainment. Like, it's just... It's, people love it. I mean, it's 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 beautiful, honestly. Uh, but I think what, what we're seeing now is people are starting to recognize uh, as creators um, and as creatives the power that they have. And so there's a little bit of bargaining power that they have now when they go to these tables and it's not just the old gatekeepers it's not the the three or four major television networks it's not the two or three you know major uh movie uh studios now you have netflix you got hulu you've got amazon right and you have these these tech companies that mm, you could say are a little more progressive every ultimately everybody wants to make money right mm-hmm. capitalism knows no you know knows no and the black dollars no 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 side but you know, they're, they're more inclined because they're looking at trends and they're looking at people are cord cutting and the young, the younger demographics, um, are, are skewing toward, um, these streaming platforms. And, you know, the, they look at the content that's being consumed and they're like, okay, well, let's, you know, let's just, you know, keep, keep giving people these opportunities to make fire content. And that's what's happening. So, um, so you see things like Issa Rae, you see things like Shonda Rhimes, uh, you see things like a- Ava DuVernay, um, Ryan Coogler, um, what's the guy's name? The the developer of Blackish. Donald. Go- oh, uh, Kenya Barris. Yeah, yeah, got a huge, huge Netflix through a bank at him, like, and so you're starting to see now, like a more, you're starting to see those black leads, right? Mm-hmm. Like you're starting to see pieces, um, time pieces with black leads, like like Bridgerton, right? Did um, messed up, y'all. It, it's 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 how the book the books were written. No, calm down. Apparently, he is in the second book. They took. It doesn't mean he I, won't I, be back. They, they took reggae out. I see them doing this like kind of like Game of Thrones, where you have all these characters, and you may be able to bring like His some certain characters may be dominant in one season, and then they may take you ain't watched a season it. off and come back. His no, contribution not, in season so I, one. I have not all. I will admit, Jessica watched it in like. The span of a week. No, I watched it in a day. In a day. And I came in and out. And all I ever saw was this dude just banging. <laughs> banging his wife. I'm like, so is this show just about, like, is this power back in the, the 17 or 1800s or whatever? Like, is this all it is? Yeah. Going through some growing pains. Yeah. Nothing but some growing pains. Yeah. Hey. Hey. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now.